Every day, millions of passengers board airplanes without a second thought. They fly across cities, countries, and oceans, trusting their lives to a metal tube traveling at 500 miles per hour, seven miles above the ground. But what if I told you airplanes aren't just safe? They're among the safest vehicles humans have ever built. Statistically, your chance of dying in a commercial plane crash is about 1 in 11 million, making it far safer than driving. That's not an accident, that's engineering. But here's the strange part. Planes weigh hundreds of tons, have millions of parts, and operate in some of the harshest conditions on Earth. And yet, they almost never fail. So how is that possible? And what makes airplanes so uniquely safe? To answer that, we need to look at where it all started. In the early days of aviation, flights weren't just dangerous, they were deadly. In the early 1910s, aviation pioneers faced extremely high fatality rates. Planes were flimsy contraptions built from wood, fabric, and hope, with engines more likely to fail than function properly, and pilots navigating by landmarks and luck. These early aircraft weren't just risky, they were rolling death traps. In fog or clouds, pilots couldn't see where they were going. Without modern navigation systems, they'd get lost or or worse, crash into mountains they couldn't see. At night, flying was practically a suicide mission. And when engines failed, which they often did, there was no backup, no redundancy, just a pilot desperately looking for somewhere safe to land. Why were they so dangerous? Because there were no standards. Every manufacturer built planes differently, with wildly inconsistent materials, control systems, and safety features. A pilot's survival depended entirely on their skill and luck. Change finally came in the 1920s and 30s, when devastating crashes forced the industry to rethink everything. The first safety regulations introduced stronger materials, better navigation equipment, and standardized pilot training. For the first time, passenger safety became a priority. Now, stronger materials and some basic rules were a good start, but early airliners were still a far cry from what we fly in today. So what other changes were made, and how did engineers turn these once dangerous machines into the safest vehicles on Earth? The answer starts with a single word, redundancy. The first real step toward making planes safer started with their systems. Early aircraft had single engines, single control cables, and single pilots. One failure often meant disaster. Engineers changed that by building redundancy into everything. For example, modern jet engines are masterpieces of reliability, but even they can fail. So engineers don't rely on just one. Commercial airliners are required to have at least two engines, and they're designed to fly perfectly well with just one working. Each of these engines is built with its own redundancies. Critical components are often duplicated or triplicated, so that if one part fails, backups are ready to take over instantly. The Boeing 777, for instance, has three separate hydraulic systems, each capable of controlling the aircraft independently. So if two completely fail, the plane can still fly and land safely. But redundancy isn't just about having more of the same. It's about diverse backups. On modern aircraft, the primary electrical system is powered by generators connected to the engines. But what if those fail? There's a backup generator called an APU, auxiliary power unit, typically located in the tail. On many larger commercial jets like Airbus A320s and Boeing 787s, if both the main generators and the APU fail, there's a ram air turbine, a small windmill that deploys from the aircraft and generates emergency power using airflow. And almost all aircraft have batteries that provide essential power to critical systems when other sources fail. This multi-layered approach is why when you hear about an airplane emergency in the news, we're gonna turn now to that terrifying video of an engine fire on a United Airlines flight forced to make an emergency landing in it almost always ends with the plane landing safely and everyone walking away. But redundancy would be meaningless if the aircraft structure itself wasn't incredibly strong. The metal skin of an airliner might look thin, but it's part of an engineering marvel called semi-monocoque construction. The entire fuselage works together as a structural unit, where the skin itself helps bear the stress, making it both lightweight and incredibly strong. These structures are designed to withstand forces 50% greater than they'll ever encounter in service even in extreme turbulence. That makes commercial airliners incredibly difficult to break, a fact that was dramatically demonstrated in 1988 when Aloha Airlines
Airlines Flight 243 suffered an explosive decompression that tore off a large section of the roof. The aircraft remained structurally sound enough for the pilots to land safely, despite missing the entire top of the forward cabin. An incredible testament to structural redundancy. But even the strongest airframe would be useless without a way to control it. And that's where another layer of safety engineering comes in. In early aircraft, control surfaces were connected to the pilot's controls by cables and pulleys, a simple, direct mechanical system that worked well enough until a cable snapped. Modern airliners use hydraulic systems to move control surfaces, with enough pressure to overcome the enormous aerodynamic forces at play. But engineers weren't satisfied with just one hydraulic system. Instead, they built three separate systems, each capable of controlling the aircraft independently. And on top of that, many modern aircraft use fly-by-wire technology, where pilots' inputs are interpreted by multiple computers that then send signals to move the control surfaces. This system allows for built-in protections that prevent pilots from making dangerous maneuvers. Even if a pilot tried to put the aircraft in an unsafe position, the computers would prevent it from happening. But what happens when those computers themselves develop problems? On the Airbus A320, for instance, there are five main flight computers constantly cross-checking each other. If one computer starts giving weird results, it gets outvoted by the others, and its inputs are ignored. The Boeing 777 uses triple redundant computers with different hardware and software designed by different teams. So even if there's a flaw in one system, it won't affect the others. This philosophy extends to every critical system, from flight controls to landing gear to navigation equipment. But redundancy is only part of the story. Airplanes don't just have backup systems, they're designed to fail safely. Fail-safe design means that when something breaks, it fails in a way that doesn't create additional problems. For example, landing gear is designed to extend using hydraulic pressure. But what if that system fails? There's a mechanical release that uses gravity to let the wheels fall into place and lock. And if that doesn't work, many aircraft can land safely without landing gear at all. It's not ideal, but it's survivable. Electronic systems follow the same principle. They're designed to fail in predictable, non-catastrophic ways. Oxygen masks deploy automatically when cabin pressure drops without requiring crew action. Emergency lighting activates independently when main power is lost. And emergency exits are designed to function even if the aircraft has no power at all. But the most impressive safety feature on any plane isn't mechanical or electronic. It's human. Pilots undergo some of the most rigorous training of any profession. Before they ever step into an airliner cockpit, they've spent hundreds of hours practicing in simulators. These aren't video games. They're exact replicas of aircraft cockpits that move and respond just like the real thing. Pilots train for every conceivable emergency, from engine failures to fires to systems malfunctions. They practice these scenarios until responses become automatic muscle memory that kicks in even under extreme stress. And they keep training throughout their careers. Every six months, airline pilots return to the simulator to prove they still have what it takes to handle emergencies. But even the best trained pilots are still human, and humans make mistakes. That's why modern aviation doesn't just rely on extraordinary individuals. It uses crew resource management. Before the 1980s, cockpits operated on strict hierarchy. The captain's word was law, and co-pilots often hesitated to speak up, even when they saw something dangerous. After several crashes where co-pilots had concerns but didn't voice them forcefully enough, the industry developed CRM, crew resource management, a systematic approach to using all available resources, including people, information, and equipment, to operate safely. Pilots are now trained to communicate effectively, challenge each other when necessary, and work as a team. This cultural shift has eliminated an entire category of accidents caused by poor communication or toxic hierarchies. But safety doesn't stop in the cockpit. Flight attendants aren't just there to serve drinks. They're highly trained safety professionals who know how to evacuate an aircraft in 90 seconds or less even in darkness, smoke, or with blocked exits. They train on firefighting, first aid, and emergency procedures for every aircraft they fly. And like pilots, they regularly practice these skills. The result of this training was dramatically demonstrated in 2009 when US Airways Flight 1549 landed on the Hudson River after losing both engines to bird strikes. The entire evacuation took about 24 minutes, with passengers standing on wings and in life rafts awaiting rescue. While this exceeded the 90 second certification
certification standard used in training. It was still remarkably efficient given the extraordinary circumstances and resulted in all 155 people surviving. That wasn't luck, it was the result of intensive training and preparation. Another remarkable example happened in 2001 when Air Transat Flight 236 ran out of fuel over the Atlantic Ocean due to a fuel leak. With both engines dead, the pilots turned the aircraft into a giant glider, descending from 39,000 feet while traveling approximately 75 to 80 statute miles to reach the Azores Islands. Captain Robert Pichet, a skilled bush pilot with extensive experience in challenging conditions. Uh, the safety of your passenger, you know, that's your main goal. And uh, since we didn't have any engine, the other main goal was to make the landing safely. So at that time, I guess the experience came in, you know, with the help of my colleague, managed to land the powerless Airbus A330 at a military base, saving all 306 people on board. This extraordinary feat of airmanship demonstrates the value of extensive pilot training and experience. Even the interior of an aircraft cabin is designed with safety as the top priority. Those overhead bins aren't just convenient storage. They're designed to stay closed during extreme turbulence. Seat cushions double as flotation devices. The floor lighting system that seems so simple actually represents since decades of research into evacuation psychology, showing that in smoke-filled cabins, people instinctively follow lights along the floor when they can't see anything else. Even the positions of the emergency exits aren't random. They're spaced according to regulations that ensure passengers can evacuate quickly, no matter where they're seated. And those exit row seats with extra legroom? That space isn't just for comfort. It's to ensure that the exit door can be opened without obstruction in an emergency. But safety doesn't just depend on the people inside the plane. Air traffic controllers maintain safe separation between aircraft, managing thousands of flights simultaneously with extraordinary precision. These professionals undergo years of training and must pass rigorous tests of their memory, spatial awareness, and ability to remain calm under pressure. Their workplace may look like an ordinary office with screens and communication equipment, but it's the site of an extraordinary juggling act that keeps aircraft separated by precise distances in three-dimensional space. Maintenance technicians inspect and repair aircraft following incredibly detailed procedures where nothing is left to chance. Every part has a service life, every system is tested regularly, and comprehensive records track the history of every component. Even a tiny screw on an airliner has a documented history showing when it was manufactured, when it was installed, and when it's due for replacement. Modern aviation also uses data to identify problems before they cause accidents. Through programs like Flight Operations Quality Assurance, FOQA, airlines analyze data from routine flights, looking for patterns that might indicate a developing problem. They can spot issues like unstable approaches, hard landings, or unusual engine performance across thousands of flights, allowing them to address concerns before they lead to incidents. This approach represents a fundamental shift in safety thinking. Instead of just reacting to accidents, the industry now proactively hunts for weak signals that might indicate future problems. It's like having an immune system that identifies and neutralizes threats before they can cause harm. One airline discovered through data analysis that at a particular airport, pilots were consistently approaching at higher speeds than recommended. By investigating, they found that local wind conditions were creating misleading airspeed readings. This was corrected with new procedures, potentially preventing a future accident that might never be linked to this subtle issue. Similarly, Aviation Safety Action Programs ASAP, encourage pilots, mechanics, and other Others to report safety concerns without fear of punishment. In one case, a pilot reported difficulty seeing runway markings at a specific airport during rainy conditions. This led to enhanced markings and lighting, making approaches safer for everyone using that runway. These anonymous reporting systems create thousands of safety improvements that passengers never hear about because they prevent incidents from happening in the first place. Weather has always been a major challenge for aviation, from thunderstorms to ice to wind Year. Extreme conditions can stress even the most robust aircraft. Modern planes are equipped with weather radar that can detect storms up to 300 miles away, allowing pilots to navigate around dangerous conditions. De-icing systems prevent ice buildup on wings and control surfaces, which could otherwise affect aerodynamics catastrophically. The battle against weather-related accidents has led to some remarkable technological innovations. For instance, the modern anti-ice system on jet engines 
uses hot air bled from the engine's compressor to keep critical components warm, essentially using the engine's own heat to protect itself. Meanwhile, electric heating elements embedded within the leading edges of wings prevent ice formation in the most critical aerodynamic areas. These systems have virtually eliminated a whole category of accidents that were once common, those caused by ice buildup, distorting the shape of wings and disrupting airflow. Early pilots navigated by landmarks and basic instruments, often getting lost in bad weather. Modern navigation systems use a combination of GPS, inertial navigation, and ground-based aids to determine an aircraft's position with extraordinary precision. Pilots can now fly precise paths even in zero visibility conditions. Terrain Awareness and Warning Systems TAWS, use databases of the Earth's topography to alert pilots if they're in danger of flying into the ground or an obstacle. This system has dramatically reduced controlled flight into terrain accidents, which were once a leading cause of fatal crashes. Similarly, Traffic Collision Avoidance Systems TCAS, monitor nearby aircraft and provide instructions to avoid potential collisions. In 2024, there were just seven fatal accidents out of over 40 million flights worldwide, giving commercial aviation a fatal accident rate of about 0.06 per million flights. Compare that to cars, where the fatality rate is approximately 7.3 per billion miles traveled or about 100 times higher per distance covered than flying. This remarkable safety record isn't an accident. It's the result of decades of engineering improvement, learning from mistakes, and building layer upon layer of protection. As technology advances, aviation safety continues to improve. Artificial intelligence is beginning to enhance predictive maintenance, identifying potential failures before they happen. Advanced materials make aircraft lighter, stronger, and more durable. The next time you're on a plane, look around at the details the multiple exits, the carefully designed seats, the clear safety information. Then, look at the wings flexing gracefully as you take off, designed to bend without breaking. Think about the pilots up front with thousands of hours of training, the maintenance technicians who carefully inspected every system, and the air traffic controllers tracking your progress across the sky. All of these elements working together form an invisible safety net that has made air travel extraordinarily safe. But sometimes, safety isn't about complex systems or redundant designs. It's about the simple things you use every day, like road barriers, those concrete and steel structures alongside highways that look so simple and yet can save your life in a crash. Click here to find out how they really work and why they're more sophisticated than you might think.